Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg and today once again we are going to talk about React and Flask. Uh, the topic for, uh, for today is how to add React Router, which is a very popular uh, library for, for React that allows you to have routes defined in the client side. Um, so I'm going to show you how to add this library to a simple React project. And then most importantly, I want to show you how using this library affects the, the, the deployment. Uh, so so uh, this is the third part in a series. In part two, I showed you how to deploy the combined React and Flask application. Uh, so there's going to be uh, a, uh, a couple of uh, minor changes that need to be made on the deployment uh, configuration when you use client side routes. So we're going to see all of that uh, in this uh, in this session. Uh, before I begin, I wanted to remind you that I am on Patreon and I'm accepting new patrons. Uh, and the little perk that uh, you invariably have to offer uh, to those who are kind enough to uh, to support your work, uh, in my case, is access to a private chat. So you will have access to a chat that's shared by all the patrons and you will be able to ask me questions or uh, submit topics uh, for me to consider, to, to write about. Uh, bas basically, you, you, uh, you will have a, a direct way to communicate with me uh, if, if that's your thing and if you, can, uh, if, if you can do this, if you can support me. So thank you so much either way. And uh, with that, let's uh, let's begin with uh, with the topic of uh, today. So uh, I'm going to start by uh, by installing uh, React Router DOM, which is the the library that we are going to use for for adding routes. And very good. Uh, so now I'm going to open my uh, my source code. And uh, one thing that I uh, I, I want to uh, clarify, uh, just for convenience while recording this video, I'm running both the development and production version of this application on the same machine, uh, which is the machine in which I uh, I showed you how to deploy in the previous part in in the in the previous video, um, so normally you would not do this. I, I do not recommend that you do this. It it really makes no sense uh, to do this uh, normally. You you will have your development version on localhost, just so that I don't have to copy files uh, once I make the changes uh, between two servers. I decided to to host it this way, um, just to make it a little bit more convenient and streamlined. Uh, during the demonstration. So, so this is the reason why you can see here that I'm connected in port 3000 of something that is not localhost. It's actually my uh, my server. Uh, so this normally will be localhost. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, so let's start by adding, uh, let's add a second page to, uh, to this uh, little project. Um, so normally when you work with React Router, you need to work with four uh, four components, uh, which are uh, browser router, uh, switch, uh, route, and link. And these all come from React Router DOM. Okay, very good. So, uh, browser router is the top level component that should, should enclose all the uh, all this, the, 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 the section of the application that is subject to routes. So I'm going to put it right here. And then, so basically inside the header, I'm going to leave the header outside uh, in this case. So browser router, like that. And then uh, to define the pages, you put a switch component. I'm going to end it right there. And then inside the switch, you have route uh, instances, one per page. So we're going to have one for the top level page, which is going to be the one that we have. 
and then uh, we're going to have a second one for a new page that I'm going to call page two and for this one uh, we can say this is page two that's it let's keep it simple um, uh, the the uh, matching the URL matching or path matching that react router does is not by exact URL uh, it matches the beginning of the URL so this this one the root URL will match everything uh, even slash page two so because we need to prevent that we uh, we're going to say that this one needs to be an exact match uh, and typically uh, what people do is they, they put the the slash or, you know the, the, the home page they put it at the end and that that helps as well and then you don't have to use the exact qualifier but I prefer to have it at the top and then specify that uh, that it needs to be an exact match um, so we have uh, we have the two pages and what we need to complete this is to have some sort of navigation bar at the top that allows us to choose uh, which page to, uh, to to go to so we can put this right here above the uh, the switch and we can do something like uh, something like this so if I save there we go um, so these are this use the fourth of those the, uh, the fourth component from react router which is link so this is going to be link to slash and this one is going to be to slash page two let's see how this looks uh, okay uh, let's put this inside a div okay and as you can see that th this link learn react has this app link class uh, so, so let's let's do that here as well so that it looks a little better on this one Okay, very good uh, okay so uh, I think this should be it right yeah there you go so home and then page two so very good this is uh, this is done so, so uh, this is what we're going to use we're, uh, we're gonna keep it very simple uh, so, so we have two pages now um, so uh, this is this is working great uh, and uh, now I'm going to switch to um, to the deployed applications so, so um, if you remember from the previous uh, from the previous part I showed you two ways to deploy this application uh, one was based on using GUnicorn and it, it was entirely based on a Python web server and then uh, the second way was based on Nginx and GUnicorn combined so Nginx uh, served the uh, the React files and, uh, and also acted as a reverse proxy to GUnicorn, which served the API. Uh, so I have that, that one, the Nginx plus GUnicorn uh, version deployed on this server right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit my editor and then I'm going to build the production version so that we, we get access to it from the, uh, from the uh, production deployment. Okay, so now it's deployed. So, so now I'm going to switch to uh, to the standard port, port 80, to see the deployed version of this. And if you play with it, you uh, you may think that this is working perfectly fine. And a lot of people that don't actually notice that uh, there there is actually a problem here. And the problem is, let's say you are on page two and. Uh, you have a user that either bookmarks this page or hits refresh. So either way, that's going to uh, cause a request for for the uh, the brand new application, a new instance of the application, going on the second page on a page that is not the root URL, 
and this is going to happen. Uh, nobody knows. Uh, Nginx doesn't know anything about slash page two, so uh, so basically it, it returns a 404. Um, so uh, ideally, we would like this to uh, to to work. We we want the uh, the React application to be loaded, even though we are not requesting the top level URL, which if you remember from the previous video, ends up going into the index.html uh, that was generated during the build. Uh, so, so basically we need all URLs that are not part of the API to basically go to index.html. That's, uh, that's basically the fix. So, uh, Let's open the uh, the nginx configuration uh, sites available uh, react flask app nginx there you go and if you remember uh, we have a location for uh, for the slash and this one tried the uh, the provided path as a file then as a directory and then if none of those worked it returned a 404, which is exactly this, what we're seeing here when the URI is slash page two. So the simple change that we are going to make here is to say that in the case that the given URL does not match anything, uh, any, any static file that we know about, then we're going to use index.html as a URL. And this is going to force nginx to return index.html for any of these uh, unknown routes. Uh, now, the the nice thing about React is that uh, this this is all you need to do. Uh, React when it uh, when it starts, it'll detect that the URL is not slash. It, it, it'll detect that it's slash page two, and then automatically on startup do the proper uh, the proper uh, navigation to uh, to the correct page so uh, let's save this uh, let's reload engine X and come here and refresh and now it works so so this is fixed so now regardless of the page that you are you can refresh and uh, everything works, the app loads, and the correct page is displayed. So uh, th this is the simple change that you need to make for uh, for an Nginx deployment. Um, but I, I showed you a uh, an alternative way, which is based on serving the whole thing, both the React and the Flask sides, with Gunicorn. So um, let's see, let's have a look at that. That is a little bit more involved. To, uh, to make work. So I'm going to switch into my uh, API directory and activate my Python environment. And um, so here I should be able to start uh, Gunicorn. Uh, let's do, uh, so let's do support 8000 for this one. Um, yeah, there we go. Let's see if I can if I can get it from here. Perfect. So so now we were running the deployed version uh, all through G Unicorn, and this also works fine. But of course, if uh, if we refresh the page when we are on page two, uh, we get this time the Flask based not found error the 404 error. And this one's coming from from Flask, uh, which is actually serving uh, all the static files. Uh, so we need to implement a similar fix for uh, for Flask. Basically, if the uh, the requested URL is not known, then uh, we we just need to return this this index page. Same uh, same as for the slash URL. Um, so you may be inclined to um, to do this with a catch-all uh, URL. Uh, so these, just in case you don't know, um, it's something something like this. You do it, you do it like this. Uh, or actually, to be proper, you will have to have one for the slash, and then one for for this 
special path uh, catch all. This this will catch any URLs even if it has multiple components. Um, so uh, you will be inclined to do this. Uh, I, I was uh, actually th this is the first this the first thing that I tried, and and this does not work. Uh, so so why it's not, uh, does not work in this case? Uh, here uh, in the uh, in the Flask application instance, we have configured all our static files to use a slash prefix. So effectively, our static files are already a catch-all. So, uh, so Flask is going to configure the static uh, route to catch all URLs and then treat them as static files. And uh, if, if the file is not known, then it returns the, the 404 that we get here. Um, so if, if we add another one, then we are going to have two catch-all URLs in the application. And sadly, the static uh, one is the one that wins. So, so this actually does nothing. So, uh, so for, for this type of project where we have a, uh, a special static uh, catch-all uh, implementation, then uh, adding another catch-all does not work. So we are going to do kind of the same thing that we did for, for Nginx. Uh, we are going to implement an error handler for uh, for the 404 error, and then uh, so this is going to be called not found. Uh, this takes the error as an argument which we don't need, but uh, here we are going to return index. So uh, so basically we uh, we flip the error and make it a success by returning the index page as well, um, and this is it. So so I believe this should actually make this work. Yeah, there we go. So uh, home and page two all working great. And this is going to work for for uh, all your client side routes, regardless of complexity. Uh, they're all going to go to index uh, on the Nginx and on the Python solutions. And uh, if the URLs are API URLs, then uh, they will still match in the Flask side. The uh, the URL matcher uh, will will prefer the API route, so it's it's going to not not get caught in the uh, in the catch all uh, or in the error. And then uh, for nginx, we have uh, as you recall, we had a, a specific route for slash API. So anything that starts with slash API will go directly into the GUnicorn instance. Uh, so this is it. Um, I hope this was useful, and uh, by all means, uh, let me know uh, what other things you would like to learn about working with React and, uh, and Flask. Uh, one topic that I uh, get asked a lot about is authentication, which is fairly complex, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it, so, so that is definitely coming at some point. Uh, so any other things that you want to know, uh, let me know. And uh, once again, if, if you get on the, uh, on the Patreon, uh, as, as a patron, uh, then uh, you will have a direct way to let me know uh, how, uh, how this works for you and what other things you would like me to, uh, to show. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.